uh, last night we were looking at this um, illustration between the war between the north and the south. And we were looking at this understanding that it's the, the wise that will understand this spiritual war that's being illustrated in the Bible. And both John and Daniel illustrate the people at the end of the world that have this revelation given to them. And the revelation is the latter rain. Okay, and you can't receive the latter rain unless you first receive the former rain. Okay, that the former rain is designed to cleanse us of all our defilements, all our wrong concepts of Christ. Okay, so uh, now we spoke a little bit last night about um, this, this U.S. Civil War. And the, the First World War, how they, they both are parallel, right? Now, for those people that have been following, right, and, and, and I know there are some people here that might not understand some of these things, right? But just on a simplistic understanding, right? The Sunday law test is the test that the people of God must go through before they are sealed for heaven. Sister White says very clearly the image of the beast test is the test that the people of God must have before the seal, right? Word for word. So, in the book of Romans, it says, uh, but I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, right? Because it's the power of God unto salvation to the... The Jew first, and also unto the Gentile, or for the Greek, right? Right? So, God's going to save his church first, and then the church is going to be used to save the world, right? But how does the Lord save his church? No, let's come before that, right? How, how did how, how did he do it in the Millerite time period? What about the Christ life? Who went to, who went to the, the church in Christ life? John, Elijah. No, no. The disciples went to the church. Okay, it was a movement that went to the Protestants, right? Okay, but we, pri we go back one step further. It was a messenger that was raised up to raise up a movement. The movement was raised up to raise up the church. The church was raised up to raise up the world. So we're at the second stage, right? Right? With the second stage where the Lord is raising up a movement, and this movement was prefigured by John the Baptist. Because John the Baptist is not just one singular person, it's a movement, it's a message. Right? Okay, so there's a messenger, raises up a movement, the movement raises up the church, the church raises up the world, right? Now all John the Baptist, right? Okay, 
Und so ist jeder davon Johannes der Täufer. And it's leading them. So when when God has a movement, the movement like John will take the church through their Sunday law crisis, right? Und wenn jetzt eine Bewegung da ist, dann wie Johannes wird diese Bewegung die Gemeinde durch die Sonntagsgesetze durchführen. Okay. So when we get to the end, those that have gone through the image of the beast test, what will they receive? Und wenn sie dann durch diese Zeit gegangen sind, durch den Bild des Tieres Test, was erhalten sie am Ende? The seal of God, the Lamb of Wings, right? Like that's the Siege same. Gottes und den Spätring, das ist beides dasselbe. Okay, some people are already falling asleep on their rough night. Terrible, right? Okay. Scheinen einige schon schläfrig zu werden. Okay, right. Yes. Did John the Baptist uh, bring the people uh, to um, Sunday law? Is it, um, do I understand this right? Well, well M Miller, um, I mean, Miller thought that um, um, M M Miller's time period, for instance, right, is typifying, um, for instance, April 19th to October 22nd is typifying the Sunday law crisis. Because the, the temple cleansing to temple cleansing is the Sunday law crisis. Also die Frage wurde gestellt, ob es Johannes der Täufer ist, der jetzt ähm, ab, äh, vielleicht habe ich das richtig verstanden, ab den Sonntagsgesetzen gemeint ist. No, he, he's asking, did Miller lead the, the Millerites in that time into a, to a Sunday law crisis in time? Also hat Müller die äh, Milleriten in Typus in ein Sonntagsgesetz versetzt? Yeah, the answer is yes. Right? Die Antwort ist ja. Because and we question and answer later, right? We will look at this, right? Because the two temple cleansings are the are the two disappointments, right? Same message for our boys. Yes, yes. Ma ma many, many proofs. I don't want to get into that right now. But the point is, from temple cleansing to temple cleansing, what was Christ doing? No, 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 no. Think about the theme of the temple cleansings. From temple cleansing to temple cleansing, Human what was heart. he doing? Yes, he was cleaning the heart, right? Once your heart is clean, what can you receive? Blood or ring. So when he got to the very end on the cross, what did he say? It is finished. What's it paralleling? It is done, right? October 22nd, 1844, she paralleled it with the cross, right? It is done, right? The temple is cleansed, finished. It can now be filled with the latter ring, right? So it's very easy to show that, but uh, we, we, we question and answer says we keep that, we, we can go through these things, right? But we understand that the Sunday law crisis, right, um, is marked by three plagues and seven plagues, right? Because the ten plagues of Egypt is the Sunday law crisis. Very easy to show, right? What was the ten plague? Passover. Which is the cross. Right? It's marking the end when the people is done, right? And he got the, the, the Jews got delivered at that point, right? And when they got delivered from that point, what's it typifying? Und dann, wenn sie befreit sind, was schadet das voraus? Deliverance from what? Von was sind sie befreit? From sin, right? Von der Sünde. So when you're delivered from sin, you can be filled with a lot of rings, right? Das heißt, wenn du von Sünde befreit wirst, bist, dann kannst du mit den Spätringen gefüllt werden. Okay, so now, we know that these seven plagues, right, it, this is the investigative judgment of the living, which is typified by... Jacob's time of trouble, right? What was Jacob doing in the time of trouble? He was pleading for deliverance, right? 
I will not let thee go until thou bless me. And Esau represents the, the papacy coming with all his army to murder God's people, right? Okay, ma many, many things we can look at. But the point is, the, the seventh plague marks the point where Christ physically <coughs> comes, right? And when he comes, Sister White says, he puts the sins on the scapegoat. Right? Well, I know we've been through this, right? But at the beginning of the seven plagues, right, when he finishes in the sanctuary, he says, it is done, he goes outside and puts the sins on the scapegoat. demonstrates the beginning, right? Und so zeigt das Ende des An den Anfang. Because when you get to the end and he says it's finished, it's the beginning of the seven last plagues, right? Denn wenn du ans Ende kommst und er sagt, es ist geschehen, dann bist du am Anfang ähm, der sieben letzten Plagen. Right? I see yeah. that we are not students of prophecy, right? They're not for the, they're not fallen, right? Well, I'm saying, when you come to the end of the investigated judgment, right? Wenn wir ans Ende des Untersuchungsberichts an den Medien kommen, Christ says it is done. Da sagt der Christus, der Hohepriester, es ist geschehen. That's when the seven last plagues begin to fall out. Und das ist ja der Punkt, wenn die sieben letzten Plagen anfangen. Okay. Right? Yeah. We've also caught, we've been through this, right? This is all old stuff, right? Darüber kann man viele Zitate machen. And all I'm doing is showing that the investigated judgment which is typifying the time of Jacob's trouble, is also paralleled with the seven last plagues. Right? They both lead to a point where Christ says, it is done, right? Right? Just go to Revelation 16. Look at the se verse 17. What's he saying? Was sagt er? It is done. Es ist geschehen. It's the same thing he says when he finishes the investigative judgment. It is done, right? Das sind dieselben Worte, die Christus oder der hohe Priester sagt am großen Versöhnungstag, wenn es geschehen ist, wenn es vollbracht ist. Okay. So in your final test, your death decree test, it's typifying the seven last plagues when, like Jacob, you're pleading for deliverance, right? So sehen wir, dass der finale Test, der Test um das Todesdekret, der Moment ist, wie, wo du wie Jakob um Befreiung pflegst. Just like the seven last Und das ist wie die sieben letzten Plagen. Right, so it's just a type, right? Not the seven last plagues, it's just type. Right? Es ist also ein Typus für die sieben letzten Plagen. Okay, so... When the scapegoat gets the sins placed upon him, he is led in the wilderness for 1,000 years, and it's a time of feast, right? Right? Yeah. What's Satan doing in that 1,000 years? Was macht Satan in den tausend Jahren? <laughs> well, he's forced to do that, but he's walking up and down He's mad, right? He's walking up and down. He can't do anything, right? And he's, he's walking up and down thinking, what are you going to do when he gets free, right? Okay, and it's like Goliath. 40 days, Goliath is taunting the Jews, right? He's walking up and down, he says. Because when Jonah comes out the belly of the whale, what does he say? Forty days comes judgment, right? 
You take the whole line, the baptism. Christ gets filled with the Holy Spirit, right? And when he spoke with the Holy Spirit, where does he go? In the wilderness for 40 days. Where does the scapegoat go get taken into? In the wilderness, right? Line upon line, brothers and sisters, you must bring them all these things together, right? So that's a quick refresher because I want to get to this point, right? So the point I was making last night is that when you get to the end here, Satan, the scapegoat, right, is bound for a thousand years, right? So ich wollte das noch einmal wiederholen, um jetzt zu dem an dem Punkt von gestern Abend anschließen zu anknüpfen zu können. Hier ist jetzt Satan, er hat die Sünden auf den Kopf gelegt bekommen und ist jetzt gebunden. And after a thousand years, what does he do? Für tausend Jahre. Und was tut er dann nach den tausend Jahren? Yeah, he goes and surrounds Jerusalem, right? Er kommt wieder und er umlagert jetzt Jerusalem. Okay, so it's just he's repeating what he did here, right? Das heißt, er wiederholt hier, was er bereits hier getan hat. Because what in Matthew 24, what begins the Sunday law? What event? Denn was steht in Matthäus 24? Welches Ereignis ist der Anfang des Sonntagsgebets? Cestius, surrounding Jerusalem, right? Es ist Cestius, der Jerusalem umlagert. Surrounding Jerusalem, time of peace, surrounding Jerusalem, right? Und hier sehen wir eine Belagerung Jerusalems, eine Zeit des Friedens und dann wieder eine Belagerung Jerusalems. Just going to repeat it, right? Und so wiederholt er das. So, the papacy, Satan's chief agent, right? Und jetzt das Papsttum, was ja das Hauptwerkzeug Satans ist. The time of trouble is the time period where the man is in rule, right? So he's sitting on the ten kings till he gets knocked off the ten kings, right? Okay, so the papacy we read last night, or we spoke about last night, Revelation 18, what happens to the man of sin? It's double, right? He gets the sin, he becomes the scapegoat, right? And he's forgotten for how long? 70 years, right? Just go to Isaiah 23 quickly. Verse 14, right? Verse 14, Jesaja 23, verse 14. Just read verse 14. Jammert ihr Tarsus Schiffe, denn eure Zuflucht ist zerstört. So, who's howling here? Wer jammert hier? The ships of Tarsus, right? Tarsus Schiffe. We will look at this. The, the ships of Tarsus is a symbol of the world economy, right? Wir werden uns anschauen, dass die Tarsus Schiffe ein Symbol ist für die Welt. Okay, and verse 15 to uh, 17. Jetzt Vers 15 bis 17. Und es wird geschehen an jenem Tag, da wird Tyrus für 70 Jahre in Vergessenheit geraten, solange ein König regieren kann. Am Ende von 70 Jahren aber wird es Tyrus ergehen mit in dem Lied von der Hure heißt. Nimm die Laute, ziehe in der Stadt herum, du vergessene Hure. Spiele gut, singe Lied auf Lied dass man wieder an dich denkt. Denn es wird geschehen am Ende der 70 Jahre, da wird der Herr Tyros heimsuchen und die wird wieder zu ihrem Hurenlohn kommen und wird mit allen Königreichen der Erde, die auf der Erde ansässig sind, Hurerei treiben. So, Tyre, Sister White says, represents the papacy, right? Und Schwester White wissen wir, dass Tyros das Papsttum darstellt. So Tyre gets forgotten for 70 years for the days of one king, right? Who's the one king? Wer ist der eine König? Five are fallen. USA. One is the United States, right? Because in 1798, the United States rises like a lamb, right? It's a lamb, right? It's, it's a time of peace, right? What changes? Was verändert sich? 
when it speaks like a dragon, right? Time of trouble. When this, just repeat, right? Right? Surrounding Jerusalem, surrounding Jerusalem. It's just showing you the same illustration over and over again, right? Okay, so and at the end of 70 years, Tyre is going to sing like a harlot with, and commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the earth, right? So just go to Revelation 17, verse 1. Because this is in 1798. And the kings for the ships of Tarshish are getting punished there. Right? She gets removed from them and they get punished and they begin to weep and howl. Right? Right? Isaiah 23, all the kings are weeping and howling. Uh, no, no, sorry, is it, uh, Ezekiel 27, that they're all weeping and howling. And in Revelation 18, the kings are, all the merchants are weeping and howling. So why are they weeping and howling? Okay, verses 1 and 2. mit der die Könige der Erde Unzucht getrieben haben und von deren Wein der Unzucht die, welche die Erde bewohnen, trunken geworden sind. So, what have the kings of the earth been doing? Was hatten die Könige der Erde getan? Drunk on a wine, committing fornication with them, right? <coughs> so, in 1798, Tyre gets forgotten for 70 years for the days of one king, the United States, right? It's Revelation 13, verse 11. Begins as a lamb, speaks as a dragon. That's the days of one king. Right? Then she gets remembered. Aber dann wird ihr so all the illustrations in the Bible are showing us about these two times of trouble. First for the church, then it's going to be a time of peace, and then repeated for the world. So you have Satan gets bound there for a thousand years. The papacy gets forgotten here for 70 years, right? Okay, end of the First World War. Who gets blamed? Germany. Germany gets blamed and has to pay reparations of 31 billion Reichsmark, I, I believe, right? And it gets bound, right? By, by the Treaty of Versailles, Germany is bound. And there's a time of peace, right? This, this court says the way she used. She says at the end of the First World War, there was a time of peace, and she says the next, the, the, the pioneers talk about the next war to come, and they say it's the final conflict, right? Yes, let his blood be upon us, right? 
So when you go to the Second World War, what's the difference between this war and this war? Six million Jews perished, right? Because they said, let his blood be upon us. They rejected him here, and they suffered the consequences right here. Cestius, who followed Cestius? See, Cestius came and then he fled away, right? Yeah. But then who comes? Titus, right? And how many Jews perished in the destruction of Jerusalem? Over a million, right? Just packed with people. Bodies were piled high in the street, right? So the destruction of Jerusalem, the Holocaust, they're both paralleling these Seventh-day Adventists that reject the lottery message when it comes. So if you don't allow your temple to be cleansed by the former rain when it comes, that you can't receive the latter rain. Guess what's waiting for us? Terrible, right? Because it says we can reject Christ in, in many ways, right? The Jews claimed that Christ was their God, right? But he fled them to their destruction. He was the one that led him out of Egypt, led him in the wilderness. Yeah, but they claimed to believe him. Yeah, they claimed to believe him. Yeah, they, claimed. they just didn't know him, that's the point. Says the says Christ was a seventh day Adventist. Okay, so Jews, type, seventh day Adventist, anti type, right? Jews crucified Christ, Seventh-day Adventists, what are they going to do? They're going to crucify their brethren, right? Christ, and, and the, they're going to persecute those that receive the latter rain, right? Okay, so that's what we're faced with, right? So uh, I, I wanted you to see because Germany is just a, an agent, it was the army of Rome, right? Und so war Deutschland nur ein Werkzeug, es war die Armee Roms. Because Germany was put in power by the evangelicals. Now, Hitler was put in power by the evangelicals. Um, denn Hitler wurde ja von der protestantischen Kirche an die Macht gebracht. They told him that he was Cyrus. Sie erzählten ihm, er sei Cyrus. He believed that he was the man in power in Romans 13. He was this fascist power that had this religious gag, right? And he typifies these right here, right? The United States was prefigured by Germany in the Second World War. Right? Where did more, the majority of Seventh-day Adventists live? In the United States, right? It's the home of Seventh-day Adventism, right? It's the land that was given them, right? Okay, so greatest persecution will come in the United States, but it'll be all, it'll be all around the world, but it'll begin right, right here. Sister White says so many places that all the Bible is speaking about the end of the world, that history will repeat itself. 
Dabei sagt es immer, immer wieder, dass die Geschichte sich wiederholen wird. Right? So, this is what is awaiting us, right? Und das ist das, was auf uns zukommt. So, okay, so, now, all, all these illustrations are paralleling each other. For instance, the First World War, the, the US Civil War, Satan being bound, um, the papacy being bound, they're all bringing us to the same point. That's the point I'm trying to show you, right? Okay, at the end of the US Civil War, um, the slaves were, were the slaves were, were black people at that time, right? That, they, they, they are symbolizing something at the end of the world. So she clearly parallels that experience, and we'll read about it much clearer in a moment, with the, US, with the, the experience of the Jews in Egypt. Right? So at the end of the US Civil War, black people are given land, right? At the end of the uh, captivity in Egypt, the Jews are led into the land. Right? Did the Jews remain in the land forever? No, they got taken back into captivity by whom? Babylon, right? Sister White parallels Babylon with Egypt, right? So they're in captivity, they go into the land, they go back into captivity. Same principle. Right? Show us the same pattern. Time of trouble, time of peace, time of trouble. Because the time of peace is marked by a time when you go into the land. Right? Okay, so what I want to do is I want to parallel now the Jews with the blacks that were freed from their slavery in America, right? What's the difference? You just take those two lines and there's two groups of people, what's the difference between the blacks and the Jews? Yeah, the blacks are not the, the people of God. Yeah, what you mean, yeah, I would agree, yes, that's the point. They're, they're, they're heathen, right? Yes. Okay, but, but it's, not it's not entirely correct, but the point is that they are heathen. They don't know God yes. at all, yes? Right? The Jews were people that had known God at one point, but had forgotten him in their time in captivity, right? So both of them were free from what sort of captivity? Literal captivity. They're both freed from literal Slavery, right? Right, now, now we're going to read, right? And we're going to bring some thoughts together, right? So let's go to this quote. We'll just read through it and I'll stop as we go along. But it's from the Southern Work. Okay, stop right there. How did the Lord bring the Jews out of Egypt? Okay, hence God is mind in the right place, right? 
Now, we've already been paralleling some things. What, what are you, when you go through the investigative judgment of the living, when you go through the image of the beast test, what do you receive? At the end, what do you receive? The seal, which is the latter ring, right? Which is the glory, right? Right? Christ, at the baptism, received the full outpouring, right? You're following? So when you get to the end here, what do you have? What two entities do you have? Christ, and who's Moses, and Paulus. No, 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 just stick to the simple things, right? You have Christ. He's illustrated by Moses, right? What does Christ mean? The anointed one, right? It's typifying a people that have gone through the Sunday law test and they are anointed. They are the Christ, right? Moses was a savior, right? So God used Moses, who represents the people that are filled with the Holy Spirit, to lead a people out of physical captivity, right? So once they're released from physical captivity, Moses is now leading them, right? Okay, so we have this vision by Ellen White, right? With this narrow way, who's in front? Christ is in the front, right? And the people are following, it's a narrow path, right? And when they came out of Egypt, they went into the wilderness for how long? 40 years. And how many of them made it to the end? Okay, so it's teaching us these things, right? So even though it's a time of peace, it's a time where you have to be even more gathered, right? Because you can lift your guard down, right? Okay, many things we have to learn. But the point I want to make is, right, you now have somebody who's filled with the Holy Spirit is going to be used to be God's messenger, a people, right? The ja. movement. Right? And they're going to lead another people out of their physical captivity. Right? Okay. I just want you to see this, right? So, let's read on. So what does it say about the Seventh-day Adventist Church? It says that they are blind and ignorant, that their minds have become beclouded in faith, that they were almost destitute of a knowledge of God. Right? Real popular message, right? The Adventists are just going to be queuing up to hear that one, right? Just like they queued up to hear Christ, right? No, they wanted to kill him, right? And history is going to repeat itself. Okay, let's read on. 
erniedrigt worden, weil sie sich mit einer Nation von Götzendienern zusammengetan hatten, und sie hatten ihre Wege durch Götzendienst korrumpiert. Dennoch gab es unter diesem unterdrückten Volk viele, die rechtschaffen und standhaft waren. Okay, so what's, what's promised in God's church? Was ist jetzt die Verheißung für Gottes Gemeinde, oder was in Gottes Gemeinde sein wird? In this body of 18 million Adventists, there are many faithful people who are holding on to that what they know to be right. Amen. Praise God. Right, let's read on. Der Herr wies Moses an, ihnen eine Botschaft von Gott selbst zu überbringen. Er sagte, darum sage den Kindern Israels, ich bin der Herr und ich will euch aus den Lasten Ägyptens herausführen und will euch aus ihrer Knechtschaft erretten und will euch erlösen durch einen ausgestreckten Arm und durch große Gerichte. Und ich will euch als mein Volk annehmen und will euer Gott sein. Und ihr sollt erkennen, dass ich der Herr, euer Gott bin, der euch aus den Lasten Ägyptens herausführt. Diese Nation von Sklaven sollte von Gott gelehrt werden. Jesus Christus, eingehüllt in die Säule aus Wolke und Feuer, sollte ihr unsichtbarer Führer sein, der Herrscher über alle ihre Stämme. Moses sollte das Mundstück Gottes sein. Okay, Moses would be what? Er sollte Moses sein. The mouthpiece of God, right? Sollte das Mundstück Gottes. What did God say to Jeremiah? Was sagte Gott zu Jeremia? In Jeremiah 15. In Jeremia 15. Yes, if you separate the precious from the vile, you shall be as my mouth. Right? Sagte zu Jeremia, wenn du das Kostbare von dem Nichtigen trennst, dann sollst du mein Mund sein. When Jeremiah came out the belly, the Lord touched his lips and he put his words in his mouth. Right? Und als Jeremia aus dem Mutterleib kam, dort berührte der Herr seine Lippen. So Christ, when he came to the earth, was anointed. He was God's mouthpiece. They killed him, right? Not popular. Did they want to also kill Moses? Yes, many times, right? Okay, let's read on. Aber die hebräische Nation, nein, nein, davor, 40 Jahre lang herrschte Gott über sie, während sie durch die Wüste zogen. Aber die hebräische Nation ist nicht die einzige Nation, die sich in grausamer Knechtschaft befand und deren Stöhnen dem Herrn der Herrscharen zu Ohren gekommen ist. Der Herr Gott Israels hat auf die große Zahl von Menschen geschaut, die in den Vereinigten Staaten von Amerika in Sklaverei gehalten wurden. Die Vereinigten Staaten waren ein Zufluchtsort für die Unterdrückten. Man hat von ihr als dem Bollwerk der Religionsfreiheit gesprochen. Gott hat mehr für dieses Land getan, als für jedes andere Land, auf das die Sonne scheint. Es ist auf wunderbare Weise vor Krieg und Blutvergießen bewahrt worden. Gott sah den fauligen Schandfleck der Sklaverei auf diesem Land. Er sah die Leiden, die die farbigen Menschen erdulden mussten. Er okay. okay, excuse me. One sec. So, he blessed the United States more than any other land. What's it typifying? The glorious land, right? Because when you cross the chasm, what's over the other side? The glorious land, right? So it says that there was no war in the glorious land. Why? God gave them a land to come into to learn of him in peace and prosperity. Right? Revelation 13, 11. Begins as a lamb, time of peace, till it speaks the dragon. The peace ends, right? The woman's back on their mind, right? Woman gets kicked off, time of peace. Woman back on, time of trouble. It's laughing, but it's a true illustration, right, ladies? <laughs> okay, right. So the point is that um, 
I, I, what I want to see is that God uses these natural illustrations to teach us spiritual things, right? Und durch nimmt der Herr diese buchstäblichen Darstellungen, um uns geistliche Lehren zu lehren. Okay, so he gave them a land for, that would be a place to learn of God in a time of peace and prosperity. Er gab den Menschen ein Land, in dem sie in einer Zeit des Friedens und des Wohlstandes von ihm lernen sollten. He gave the Jews a land to learn of God, because they didn't know God, right? Und so gab er auch damals den Juden ein Land, in dem sie von Gott lernen sollten. From the moment they came into the land, there was all these rituals, um, uh, agricultural laws, the, these yearly, monthly laws that they had to keep. All these things were to teach them about Christ. Right? Sobald sie ja in das verheißene Land eintraten, wurden die ganzen diese landwirtschaftlichen Gesetze, die Feste, die, ähm, das Zivilgesetz, wurde alles an Platz gesetzt, damit sie jetzt von Christus lernen konnten. Okay, so you can see the perfect parallel here between the slaves in the United States and the Jews coming out of Egypt. Wir sehen also, wie es eine vollkommene Parallele ist, wie die Sklaven in Amerika befreit wurden zu den Sklaven der Israeliten, die aus Ägypten befreit wurden. Right? So, Egypt is the world. The United States, many countries typifying the world. Und so wie Ägypten ja die Welt darstellt, so stellt auch die Vereinigten Staaten, ein Konglomerat aus vielen einzelnen Staaten, die Welt voraus. Okay. Also das zeigt uns die Welt auch. Let's read on. Lesen wir weiter. Er bewegte die Herzen der Menschen dazu, sich für diejenigen einzusetzen, die so grausam unterdrückt wurden. Die Südstaaten wurden zu einem schrecklichen Schlachtfeld. Die Gräber der amerikanischen Söhne, die sich für die Befreiung der unterdrückten Rasse gemeldet hatten, sind überall in ihrem Boden. Viele starben und gaben ihr Leben, um den Gefangenen die Freiheit und den Gefesselten die Öffnung des Gefängnisses zu verkündigen. Gott sprach über die Gefangenschaft der farbigen Menschen so wahrheitsgemäß, wie über die hebräischen Gefangenen und sagte, ich habe das Elend meines Volkes sehr wohl gesehen und ich habe ihr Geschrei gehört über die, welche sie antreiben. Ja, ich kenne ihre Schmerzen und ich bin herabgekommen, um sie zu erretten. Okay, so, when it said there, many fell in death, giving their lives to betray liberty to the captives. It's talking about the northern men, right? Spricht er hier, dass viele starben und ihr Leben gaben, um den Gefangenen die Freiheit zu predigen. Die Soldiers The soldiers of the north who died on the battlefield to deliver them from their captivity. What's it typifying? And what does it use? It uses the language, many fell in death giving their lives to proclaim liberty to the captives. Who proclaimed liberty to the captives? Yes. Represents the martyrs who in this time period right here will, uh, uh, sorry, in this time of trouble right here, will be giving their lives to save people from their slavery, right? Die Soldaten des Nordens schatten die Menschen am Ende der Welt voraus, die die Märtyrer, die in dieser Zeit der Stückzahl fallen werden, um den Gefangenen die Freiheit zu verkünden. Amen? It's Amen. real easy to see that how the Lord has taken the natural and teaching us the spirit. Und so sehen wir, wie der Herr das Buchstäbliche nimmt, um uns Geistliches zu lehren. Okay, let's um, read on. Lesen wir weiter. Der Herr wirkte bei, wirkte bei für die Befreiung der Sklaven im Süden. Aber er wollte noch mehr für sie tun, so wie er es für die Kinder Israels getan hatte, die er befreite, um sie zu erziehen, zu verfeinern und zu veredeln. So, the, the literal Israelites, he took them out of Egypt, took them into a land to teach them about him, right? Und so befreite der Herr die Israeliten, er brachte sie in ein Land, und dort wollte er sie über sich selbst lehren. And he wanted to do exactly the same for the black slaves. So what does he need? Was braucht er aber dazu? A, a mouth, yes, a movement. It's a, this mouthpiece, right? Er braucht eine Bewegung, er braucht ein Mundstück. And this, what we read it, is called the Southern Work, right? Und wir lesen hier aus, einem, aus einer Zeitschrift, die heißt das Werk in den Südstaaten. So let's see what happened. Let's read on. Also lasst uns sehen, was geschieht. Christus selbst wirkte mit seinen ernannten Führern und wies sie an, was sie für sein Volk tun sollten, das so schrecklich erniedrigt worden war. Sie sollten von allen Nationen getrennt gehalten, geleitet und beraten werden, bis sie durch eine korrekte Darstellung des göttlichen Charakters Gottes
Gottes ähm, ist sie durch eine korrekte Darstellung des göttlichen Charakters Gott kennenlernen, seine Gebote verehren und ihm gehorchen wollen. Okay. So it says they were to be kept separate from all nations to be directed and counseled until they come to a correct understanding of God. Sie sollten von allen Nationen getrennt gehalten werden und halt von Gott geleitet und beraten werden, bis sie eine korrekte Erkenntnis des göttlichen Charakters erhalten. So how did he keep them from all other nations? Und wie hielt er sie von all den anderen Nationen getrennt? Brought them into the land that was protected and there was peace there. There was no war ever took place on the soil of the United States of America apart from the US Civil War, which this is illustrating this time after, right? brachte sie in ein Land, wo niemals Krieg herrschte, genau wie in den Vereinigten Staaten, wo kein Krieg herrschte, jemals auf amerikanischem Boden, außer dem US-Bürgerkrieg. Right? The, the, the point I'm making is that the Lord, from after the US Civil War, he gives them this land. It's a, it's a great time of peace and prosperity. There's no war in the United States in this land. Und den Punkt, den ich machen möchte, ist, dass nach dieser Zeit der Trübsal den äh, Menschen ein Land gegeben wird, in dem Frieden And what was the Lord going to prepare them for? Und auf was wollte der Herr sie vorbereiten? What's coming? Denn was kommt? The coming. The coming. Right? So the United States has to be this land of peace and freedom until the Sunday law comes, right? Because it's a time period for those black slaves to, to learn of God, right? He gave them this time. Und es wird gezeigt, dass diese schwarzen Sklaven, die jetzt lernen sollten, Gottes Charakter kennenlernen sollten, vor dem Sonntagsgesetz. Right? The Jews were given a land until Nebuchadnezzar came, right? Und so wurde den Juden ein Land gegeben, bis Nebuchadnezzar kam. Because Moses told them, before they went in the land, that you're going to go in the land, you're going to corrupt yourself, and there's a nation going to come and destroy you. Denn Mose sagte ihnen ja bereits voraus, dass sie in das Land einziehen würden, dann aber abfallen würden, und dann würde eine Nation über sie kommen, failed to use this time to learn of God, right? Okay, let's read this next paragraph. Im Vergleich zu denjenigen, die ihr Leben auf dem Schlachtfeld zu genießen. 
haben wir nicht auf die Schwierigkeiten geschaut, die sich auftaten und haben uns der Arbeit entzogen? Vielleicht haben einige von uns Trauer über ihr Elend empfunden, aber was haben wir getan, um sie von der Sklaverei der Sünde zu retten? Wer hat diese Arbeit auf intelligente Weise in Angriff genommen? Wer hat die Last auf sich genommen, ihnen geistige Freiheit zu schenken, die für sie zu einem unendlichen Preis erkauft wurde? Haben wir sie gebeutelt, verschlagen, verachtet und verlassen zurückgelassen? Ist dies das Beispiel, das Gott uns in der Geschichte der Befreiung der Kinder Israels gegeben hat? Ganz und gar nicht. So right at the end here, who does he liken this, the slaves that came out of, uh, were released in, in slavery to? Mit wem vergleicht es hier die um, Sklaven, die aus, also die in Amerika befreit wurden? This last line, who's it, what's it talking about? No, 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 it's, it's referring to a parable in the Bible. Which parable? Die, um, also hier in dieser Frage. Yes. The priest and the Levite that walked by the way saw the man beaten, lying in a ditch, and they ignored him. What were they to do? They were to go to him and free him from his sin. If we don't understand it, there are certain liberties that are going to be given back to us here in this time of peace. Freedoms that are not here in this time. So when God punishes the nation here, they will fear and they will give you back your freedoms. You're not to sit around idle. You have to go, right? Go, free them from their sin. Teach them about God. Lest we be guilty of this sin of neglect. And this is teaching us what this work that's right before us. There's a work that we have to do, right? And the Lord is trying to prepare us already to understand that when that time comes, you know what your work is, right? Okay, now let's look at this closely. Go to um, go to Matthew chapter two. Right? I'm running out of time. Uh, there are lots of things to cover, but we'll try to do it. Stop right there. Christ is typifying his people, right? <coughs> he went into Egypt until the death of Herod, right? Right? Then when Herod died, Christ was called out of Egypt, so it could be fulfilled. Out of Egypt have I called my son. Keep that point in mind. When you come out of Egypt, he's calling you his son, right? Okay, let's go to Hosea chapter 11 and verse 1. 
This is where it's taken from in the book of Matthew. Who's it talking about? Christ. No, read what it says. Too quick, right? What does it, what does it say? Israel, right? So when Christ comes out of Egypt, called him his son, it's typifying his people coming out of Egypt, right? Right? So the Bible has to explain itself, right? So go to Galatians chapter 4. Verse 1. Brother and sister, we need to wake up. We need to pay particular attention to little details, right? Okay, the, the heir, as long as he's a child, he's a servant. That's what it's saying, right? And the word servant there means slave. Because it's talking about the time period where Christ is born at the time of the end until he's 30 years old when he gets baptized, right? Right? So he, in this time period, he's classed as being a child. And he's under the law. And when you're under the law, what were you in? Bondage. It's a parallel, right? When you were in bondage to the law, you were in bondage in Egypt. Same thing. So let's read on. Sondern er steht unter Vormündern und Verwaltern bis zu der vom Vater festgesetzten Zeit. So the tutors and governors was the law, right? Vormünder und Verwalter, das war das Gesetz. Because this is what Christ was learning from. Day in, day out, he was learning the law exactly why he was there, why he was the Messiah, what was his purpose, right? Das ist das, was Christus in seinen 30 Jahren der Vorbereitung tat. Er lernte aus dem Gesetz, er lernte, dass er der Messias war. Now, in verse 3, it's going to parallel it to God's people, right? Okay, so when Christ, from his birth to when he's 30, when he's under the law, is a parallel to when God's people were in bondage to the world, in Egypt, right? Okay, let's read on verse 4. Als aber die Zeit erfüllt war, sandte Gott seinen Sohn, geboren von einer Frau und unter das Gesetz bekam. Damit er die, welche unter dem Gesetz waren, lostaufte, damit wir die Sohnschaft empfingen. Weil ihr nun Söhne seid, hat Gott den Geist seines Sohnes in eure Herzen gesandt, der ruft, aber Vater. So bist du also nicht mehr Knecht, sondern Sohn. Wenn aber Sohn, dann auch Erbe Gottes durch Christus. Okay. When did Christ become a son? Wann wurde Christus ein Sohn? So at the baptism, right? When he's filled with the Holy Spirit. When he was 30 years old. And he was now sent, right? And it says here that, verse 6, because ye are sons, God has sent forth his spirit into your hearts, right? You're no more a servant, but a son. 
So when you get delivered from your bondage in sin, you're no more a servant to sin, you're now a son of God, right? And from his birth to his thirty is the image of the beast dead. So Christ is representing somebody who receives the latter rain and is now sent to free a people from their sin, right? Just like Moses. And we see this in Matthew 3, verse 16. Okay, this is my beloved son, and whom I am well pleased. How do you please God? Without faith, it's impossible to please him. When you come to the midnight cry, what are you tested on? To see if there's any faith in the promises of God that he's able to deliver you, right? So when you, when you have faith in the promises of God that he delivers you by giving you the latter rain, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, right? So when one people is being delivered from their sin, another people is being delivered from their physical slavery, right? And the one is to go to the other, right? Now, the Jews... When they came out of Egypt, it was on Passover, right? And Passover is typifying when Christ comes the second time to deliver his people. Because he came at the seventh plague. And just go read what it says in Revelation 22 and verse 12. What does he bring with him? Reparations. Right? He gives you all the blessings because this is this is his gift to you, right? What did the Jews get when they came out of Egypt? Gold, silver, jewels, they got given all this treasure from the Egyptians, right? So the point is that right here, when the when the beast gets bound, you're going to receive physical reparations, but also spiritual reparations, right? Okay, so uh, we'll just close. Go to the very last quote. Because here we see the spiritual reparations, that Christ comes the second time, right? Als 
kleines Utensil als er ihn sah. Aber Christus stärkte ihn, den Anblick zu ertragen und gab ihm dann eine Botschaft, die er an die Kirchen Asiens schreiben sollte, deren Namen die Merkmale jeder Kirche beschreiben. Okay, so when Christ came to John on the Isle of Patmos, where was John? Als Christus zu Johannes ähm, kam, wo war Johannes? Okay. Yes, but it, but what is Patmos? Er war auf Patmos, aber weißt du nicht? He was in prison, he was in bondage, right? Patmos war sein Gefängnis, er war in Knechtschaft. He delivered them from his literal bondage, but also he now had, he was filled with the treasures from heaven, right? He, he's Represent this person is filled with a lot of ring, right? And John was sent, right? And what lesen wir? Johannes wurde hier gesandt. To the seven churches, right? Zu den sieben Gemeinden. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, the Lord is unfolding things to us that some things that we cannot even begin to fathom. But if you don't keep up with the advancing glory, you will not receive that former rain. It will not cleanse you, and you will not receive the glory that he wants to pour on his people right here at midnight. Aber wenn wir nicht Schritt halten mit dem fortschreitenden Licht, dann können wir das Licht des Frührings nicht empfangen, was uns reinigen soll und uns vorbereiten soll, die Herrlichkeit Gottes, die er ausgießen will, an Mitternacht zu empfangen. And okay, we'll close with one verse. Go to, go to Luke 1 and verse 15. Because we're talking about John here, right? John the Baptist, typifying these people. What does it say? What's the mother's womb? This test, right? Right here. This is this, this test. What is right here, right? When John comes out of the belly, what is he? Filled with the Holy Spirit, right? It's spiritual, not literal, right? There's no babies filled with the Holy Spirit from their mother's womb, right? That's Catholic teaching, right? Amen? Okay, there's a promise there, brothers and sisters. If we understand these things, if we stand fast through this test, there's a beautiful promise waiting for us, right? And now work is being set before us. Right. Amen. Amen. Shall we close in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for the wonderful way in which you teach your word. That there's no possibility of any human planning uh, fault in this world. It's beyond the mind of the most brightest of men to come up with such a plan. Such an intricate uh, way to bring truth together. And yet, Lord, its perfectness proves of its divine origin. Lord, please help us to realize that we are to put you first and foremost in every aspect of our lives. That we would not be of those that are not prepared to receive that blessing when it's being poured out. Help us therefore to make the first best in everything. That you might finish the work in cleansing the evil hearts of others. Thank you.
thank you for your for your great love for us. And we ask all this in the name of Jesus. Christ.